the westerners took the foundations of the indigenous peoples societies and ways of living and left them with nothing the formation of the natives mind by assigning the mark of negative to everything african and the positive to everything european marlo in heart of darkness belittles africans by depicting the man crawls on the ground like an animal walking on all fours to drink from a river whereas an european would never drink from anything but a well or a tap moreover he also says that to look at him was as edifying as seeing a dog in a parody of breeches and a feather hat walking on his hind legs at a time marlo depicts the africans as prehistoric and simple the prehistoric man was cursing us praying to us as sane men would be before an enthusiastic outbreak in a madhouse for most of the novel in the place of speech the natives made a violent babble of uncouth sounds this shows that according to conrad the people of africa were unable to speak a proper language and they used violent babbles to converse in heart of darkness the wilderness seemed to have penetrated into the very being of mr coots the wilderness had cursed him had taken him had loved him embraced him and taken complete possession of his soul he had become a spoiled and pampered favorite of the wilderness as for ivory mr coots had collected heaps and heaps of it and had not left a simple tusk of ivory everywhere in congo to be picked up by anybody else he had a sense of ownership of all things he had been heard saying my ivory my intended my station my river my everything may belong to him but he himself belong to the powers of darkness in his pamphlet where he expressed his views that the white people could do a lot to improve the conditions of the life of the savages however at the end of this pamphlet he had also written in a hurry exterminate all the brutes he had written at the end that the savages should be completely annihilated H B in his novel Things Fall Apart writes back to Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness which has provided blind realism about African life. H B has depicted the enriched culture of Africa in his novel. Mr H B draws a fascinating picture of tribal life among his own people in Things Fall Apart H.B. carefully makes the reader aware of the traditional Igbo culture that Okonko claims to represent varied from clan to clan and was very dynamic. Among the Igbo, the art of conversation is regarded very highly and proverbs are the palm oil with which the words are eaten. On the contrary, in Heart of Darkness, Conrad says that Africans use violent babbles to converse. Complex societies of Africa are depicted in these words by H B. Feast of the new yam was held every year before the harvest began to honor the earth goddess and the ancestral spirits of the clan. H B is writing in the novel to Conrad by telling a story of the indigenous way of life for the ipo in africa before colonialism the story portrays a society of people who have a very complex belief system calendar which is based of of harvesting as well as rules to how the society should be run 
he suggests that what made the people of Africa underdeveloped and primitive was the colonizers. The post-colonial African state was determined by the colonial state. The British had frozen the indigenous institutions while at the same time robbing the colonized of every scope and freedom for self-development. The Nigerian H. B. calls Conrad a bloody racist and asks the provocative question whether a novel which celebrates this dehumanization which depersonalized a portion of the human race can be called a great work of art. My answer is no, it cannot. Now let's come to Twilight in Delhi and the impact of colonialism and imperialism on the people of India. In the introduction of the novel, the writer said, The damage done by colonial powers to the heritage of conquered peoples is irreversible. Yet, racial memory is a collective storehouse that time and history cannot eradicate. The novel begins with the voice of Hafiz, poet taken by Ahmed Ali to address the audience. In the lines of Ali, a storm is raging upon the shore that's safe and dry. Begum Jamal and Begum Nihal remarked at a time, what will these good as dead Ferengis give, dust and stones? After the colonial impact of Britishers, the city of kings and monarch Delhi has been reduced to the stature of a bitten dog. Delhi was once a paradise. Such peace had abated here, but they have ravished its name and pride. Remain now only ruin and cure. Ravished were the people of Hind, unenviable their fate. Ahmed Ali remarked about Britishers. They have put the iron chain of slavery around their once unbending necks. Here there means the people of Hind. Colonialism has brought a hybrid culture in India, a hodgepodge of Indian and Western ways with no remnant of past glory. Colonialism had brought English shirts, English boots, Christianity, atheism, dressing gowns, sofa chairs, and tables in the English fashion. Said Hassan repents. What a pity our people used to sit on the floor. It could be used to sleep on and for other purposes. But we are forgetting our own culture and are learning the way of others. The virtue of constancy is dying from the world. There were those men of 1857 and here were the men of 1911 chicken-hearted and happy in their disgrace. These are the hints about the impact of imperialism and colonialism in the three novels Heart of Darkness, Twilight in Delhi and Things Fall Apart. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe our channel, press the bell icon, like the video, comment below for your suggestions and share with your friends. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.